my friends. We are back in the office here. I've got my celery juice that I'm sipping on. You know, this is that good stuff. You gotta drink that celery juice to keep your body clean and your mind functioning properly. It's also really good for clearing up skin, like acne, things like that. And you wanna drink 16 to 32 ounces a day. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I make t-shirts. I started to make t-shirts for not only the new business that we created, Lot Land Developments, but also my husband's barbershop business. He does have a very uniquely designed logo and they look great on t-shirts. So I'll be showing you the process today of how I make those. We have three colors of shirts that we got from Under Armour. One is forest green, the other gray, and the last black. On the black shirt, we like to use a silver metallic print and on the green and gray, we use black. We got sizes ranging from small all the way up to double XL. First, what I'm going to explain is what I have here in my studio that makes up my mini t-shirt business, Silhouette Cameo 4. This is a vinyl cutter. It is used to do so many more arts and crafts that I am not even fully aware of yet, but in my research, I did find that this was a good option to go for cutting out heat press vinyl. Then I got the Fancier Studio heat press. It's just one that I did some YouTube research online and found that this is a good beginner one. The Silhouette Cameo 4 connects to the computer via a USB cable. Once you get the Silhouette Cameo 4, it comes with instructions where you can download the software. The software that comes with Silhouette Cameo 4 is the Silhouette Studio. And this is where you can put your design on, you can edit it, make it bigger, smaller, add any other flares you want to yet. I haven't really explored it too much because we already have our designs that I just simply input into the software, resize it to what I want it to be, and then I print it. Let's take a look at our logo that we're gonna print today. This is the logo for my husband's barbershop. It does take a little bit longer to weed out because there are so many extra pieces. It's a labor of love and they come out beautiful every time. For the large and medium, I make the size of the design about 10 inches wide and then the height will just adjust automatically. For the extra large and double XL, I'll make it 11 inches wide. You can't go the full 12 inches width of the mat because it just simply would not fit on there. This is actually only nine inches wide, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the size to be 10 inches. And as you can see, it just open up a little more, but at the top here, there is a red line where you need to have the image inside so that it will cut out properly. So I just drag it down a little bit and then make sure it's all fitting in there. So this is what it will look like when you first put it on there, but you want it to be flipped horizontally because when you press it down onto the shirt, then it's going to come out the right way. If you were to print it like this, which I did do the first couple times, it's not going to print properly on the shirt. It will be backwards. What I do is I just just right click and I click flip horizontally. There we go, it's 10 inches wide, which is what I want. And it's as much to the top as it can be. You wanna do that to try and save your paper a little bit because it does print out an extra couple inches. Just, I don't know, the machine does that. And then at the bottom, it doesn't matter because you can just trim it. So I'm gonna click send. But before we do that, let's actually go over to the Silhouette Cameo 4 and load up our heat transfer vinyl. So I like to get the rolls because I print so much and this is about a 20 foot roll and it's 12 inches wide. This is the black heat transfer vinyl. I do have also a white and a silver metallic -y color. How you want to load this into the Silhouette Cameo 4 is they do have this tray in the bottom here. You just pull that out of the way. You have to flip this thing back, lift up the sides. So this is where your roll is going to sit. See there's two little dowels here. You just want to put that in there and then tighten it to hold this in place. You want to make sure that the glossy side, because this is the iron side, is facing downwards. And then the matte side like this is going into it. So you have to weave it through this little thing here. I should turn this on first. Now it is ready. If you can see this right here, there is a gray line that you need to line up whatever you're putting in here. And then you just tuck it under just a little bit and you need it to suck it in. Click that. 
all right? And sometimes the paper will curl backwards under the blade. So what I've learned to do is just take the blade out by pulling that, lift this up. So now it's flat under there. Got to push this back in. Got to make sure that it snaps into place and locks down. So now that we are loaded here, I'm going to send our design to the Cameo and it's going to start cutting for us. Okay, now in our Silhouette Studio, we're going to go to the Send tab at the top corner here and see it's all outlined where it's going to be cutting in red. And then at the bottom here, you click Send and it will send to the Cameo. When I click Send, I like to hold this down just to make sure it doesn't curl backwards. Now we're gonna let this cut, and in the meantime, we're gonna press down one of our shirts so that it's nice and flat before we put our design on. Anytime you're pressing on a shirt, you do wanna cover it with this protective sheet just to make sure that it doesn't damage the shirt or any existing logos that are on there. So you medium soft press this, not all the way down, just for three seconds and then it'll give it an iron top. And that's a nice space for you to put your design on. I know most people just eyeball it when they're putting the design on here, but I like to be a little bit more precise. So I've kind of measured it out to where it needs to be for each size. From the top collar here, I will go down about five inches or four and a half. I'll mark it with my finger and then I just kind of draw a line just like that, just so I can see. And then I'll measure in from the side of the shirt what the width is. So 12 inches to there, and then about eight inches to the end. So we have 20 inches across. Now that I know I have 20 inches from side to side, and I know that my design is 11 inches, I'm gonna do 20 minus 11, which is nine. So I have nine inches left over between these two sides to work out where I want to space it in the middle. So nine divided by two is four and a half. So I'm gonna measure in four and a half inches and then just kind of mark it again. And then I'm gonna measure in another four and a half inches. Just kind of mark it right there again. There is a little square area of where I want to place my design. The top of it's going to be about here, and then the sides of them are going to hit right here. And that's kind of how I get it, a little perfect. Learning as I go, I do have a design here already cut out. Before, I used to just leave all this extra around, and it just was a little bit harder for me to peel everything off afterwards. So as you can see, the design is in here, and there's just all this extra that's kind of around here. So what I like to do is just cut it out. My design cut out and you can see it a lot better. I'm gonna go ahead and weed out all of the extra stuff. I do like to have a towel close by because what I found is that when I am weeding things out, it is easier for me just to pull something off and have a towel close by just to wipe it like that. Because before I was constantly just trying to flick it off, peel it off with my fingers and such, but this really helps. I've done so many of these, I know what to weed out. Whereas when I first started doing it, I had to constantly keep glancing back at the original image to make sure I was pulling out the right pieces. But now as time goes on, you do get better at what you do. Practice does make better. So don't give up if you think you're doing it wrong or you waste a lot in the beginning. It definitely takes practice. The key is don't give up. When it's a more detailed design like this with smaller pieces, sometimes they do get stuck and they don't rip out properly. So you kind of have to pick them off of the original vinyl and place it as best as you can where it's supposed to be. You gotta be careful with this and do it a little bit slower. Sometimes you could end up ripping the actual design. Our design is definitely coming together. Here 
we have our finished design. Now let's go put it on our shirt. And as you can see, when it's going to be put on the shirt this way, it is the right way. It does look a little bit crappy right now, but it's gonna look good on the shirt. Right, so now I'm gonna try and place it within these lines that I drew before. I think that looks good, so now I'm just gonna press it down, cover it up with our protective sheet. And now we're going to press it for 15 seconds. Remove the sheet. This has to sit for about 45 seconds to cool before you peel it off. Now that it's cooled, we're gonna go ahead and peel it off slowly. There we have it, a beautifully designed, beautifully printed, proper culture t-shirt. All right, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. I hope you got to learn something. I'll see you at my next video. Bye.